Thank you for choosing a Hilleberg tent. This film is a supplement to the instruction booklet. We recommend that you both read the booklet carefully as well as practice handling the tent before your first backcountry trip. The Citerus is a very strong tent when used correctly, but it does require proper care and handling in order to function optimally. While pitching the tent, make it a habit to work in a kneeling position. It's also important to secure the tent against the wind to your backpack or elsewhere with one of the guy lines and to always put away loose bags so they don't blow away. Place the ground pegs in your pocket as they need to be close at hand while pitching the tent. If the weather turns foul, it's beneficial to have learned the setup routines. The site selected should be as level as possible and free from any objects that might damage your tent. To prevent the risk of water collecting under the floor and to get better tension on the tent, it's advantageous to choose a place that is slightly convex. The tent should be pitched with a smaller vestibule towards the wind. Lay out the tent on the ground and peg down the smaller vestibule. In severe weather, you can also peg down the large vestibule without stretching it too much. Press the ground pegs down at a 45 degree angle until only the very top of the peg remains visible. Otherwise, the pegs might get pulled out in strong winds. If you can't get them into the ground by hand, then push or hammer them down with a stone, but do not step on them. For maximum longevity and durability of your tent poles, it's important that you're careful with them and that you put together one section at a time. Make sure that the segments are properly seated and that they don't drift apart while pitching the tent. A small gap can lead to pole breakage. Never throw the poles out of the bag. They can be damaged and scratches can later lead to cracks in the poles. We have chosen the best poles on the market for our tents, but it's a lightweight product that requires proper handling, otherwise the poles may break and can, in the worst case scenario, lead to a dangerous situation. Make sure that all guy lines are set to their longest setting and peg them down temporarily. This provides extra support during pitching and helps prevent the guy lines from tangling. Do not make them too tight or they will interfere with inserting the poles. Four out of the five poles that accompanied your citrus have the same length. The fifth color-coded pole is shorter and is used in the vestibule. In good conditions, start with the lengthwise poles into their sleeves, which cross at the tent's highest point. Make sure to seat each pole end completely and to tension each pole holder properly. The pole sleeves and the clips are designed so you can use two poles. This increases the stability and strength of the tent in extreme weather conditions. Continue with the crossing poles. Push a pole into the crossing pole sleeve that is closest to the smallest vestibule about halfway into the sleeve. Then hold on to the pole while pushing the pole sleeve material onto the pole. Make sure the pole end is seated completely into the closed end of the pole sleeve. Place the pole end into the plastic pole tensioning cup and affix the plastic clips onto the exposed part of the pole. For added stability, wrap the guide lines around the poles at their crossing points. Tighten the vent cover's buckles and wrap the guide lines from the vent cover around the crossing point of the crossing poles. Insert the color-coded shorter pole into its sleeve by the large vestibule and peg it down. Tighten the peg tensioners in the vestibule peg points. For maximum stability, peg down the perimeter of the tent, making sure to press the pegs completely into the ground. Finally, tighten the guy lines, but make sure not to tighten them so tight that they deform the tent. The Citerus is a self-supporting tent, but if possible, do get into the habit of securing all guy lines as weather conditions can quickly change. 
The entrance of the small vestibule can be opened both from the top and the bottom and is rolled up and secured with an elastic loop and toggle. Both vestibules have large, adjustable vents which are placed in a high position and protected by a hood. They have both a no seam mesh and a snow secure flap which are easy to adjust from the inside and fasten with an elastic and toggle. The entrance of the large vestibule can be opened from the top, the bottom and from the side depending on the conditions and is rolled and secured with an elastic loop and toggle. It is backed by a full, no seam mesh door that can be removed and stowed in a detachable pocket next to the entrance. For extra security in heavy winds, the zipper can be locked down with the red toggle. Each entrance to the inner tent has a large zip open hatch leading to an opening covered with no seam mesh. For maximum ventilation, open the hatch completely. By removing all or part of the inner tent, you can create a large inner space. This area is a good place to gather a large group or to deal with your gear. A pole holder kit for the Scytheris is an optional accessory that makes it easy to set up the inner tent separately. Remember that even though the inner tent is water repellent, it is not waterproof. It should only be used in dry and warm conditions where there's no risk of rain. In order to take down the tent, repeat every step of the tent assembly process, but in reverse. If you have the opportunity, it's a good idea to sweep and dry out the tent before taking it down. Close all zippers and clean them with a small brush. Ensure that all guy lines are fully extended in order to facilitate the next occasion you set up your tent. To remove the poles, grip the pole sleeve and, starting at the closed end of the sleeve, push the poles out. Never pull out the poles. Detach the clips from the poles. Again, do make sure not to step on the tent. If you don't immediately place the poles in their bag, then they should be placed somewhere where no one will step on them or they can get lost. As you remove and fold up the poles, check if any of them have been damaged. Then, put them, along with the ground peg bag, into the pole bag. Throughout the takedown process, make sure your tent is anchored and that loose bags are in your pockets so that they don't blow away. Fold the tent and roll it up together with a pull bag in the middle and put it into the tent bag. Alternatively, you can store the ground peg bag and pull bag separately. If you want, you can also stuff the tent down into the tent bag instead of folding it, but then you need to make sure to pack the poles and pegs separately, not to damage the bag. Never store a wet tent for a long time. Hang it up to dry as soon as you can, preferably with poles in place so that the fabrics are kept apart. 
In very wet and humid conditions, you can remove the inner tent before the outer tent is disassembled and store it separately in your backpack. Next time you pitch the tent, first set up the outer tent and then attach the dry inner tent. Since the fabric of the outer tent is waterproof but not breathable, condensation can form on the inside of the outer tent. The use of an extra footprint, which is sold as an accessory, provides protection against ground moisture. We do welcome you to visit Hilleberg.com, where you can see our entire collection and learn more about your tent. You can also find out more about Hilleberg the Tent Maker, including our history, philosophy, and how we make our tents. Find out about expeditions that use Hilleberg tents and locate a dealer near you. You will also find information, equipment lists, and practical advice that can help you in planning your next adventure.